Good afternoon. I'm Tony Pellegrino. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Tech Talk. This is something I do here on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday. So uh, by all means, join us. As always, we welcome your questions and comments. Please be sure to include, include the year and model of your vehicle along with um, any kind of a description for your question. Um, I've got Debbie here with me uh, to read all of the questions as they come in. And uh, it's awesome to have everybody join us every Tuesday and Thursday for this. So it is Tuesday, January 26th. It's all a blur to me right now. I don't even know what day it is because we are getting ready for King of the Hammers. And uh, we've had 14 people here working almost around the clock. And... Uh, we have pulled it together, but it is mind-numbing. So, uh, Debbie's looking at me like, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. <laughs> All right. Um, today, we are going to talk about rugged race radios. We are going to talk about the ball joint eliminator kit. I finally got it installed on the knuckles. I've got some new RCV stuff to show you. And uh, we are going to take another tour around the shop. The lights are on this time. That'll be a little better. And uh, we're going to look at where we're at with all the different vehicles, um, including the Growler, the old 4485 race car, Jordan's number 98, and uh, whatever else we've got over there. So lots of stuff to show you. So hold on tight. How are we doing? Have we got quite a few people on yep, so far? about 130. All right, excellent. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Let's jump right into it. So officially, today's topic was race radios. And uh, what I want to do is talk to you guys about the two different versions that this thing comes in. And um, the easiest being the little handheld radio. These are very affordable. This one has an extended battery pack and an, an antenna inst extension. Sorry, I don't know what to say. Um, these are great. They're super easy to use, and um, you just push the button, you know, like you would anything. Um, so this is the small handheld available from Rugged Race Radios. They are one of our official partners. These guys have supplied us with product for over 10 years and been a great company, excellent service, everything out of them. Um, I, I don't think we can say enough uh, communication for us while we're racing or off-roading, just jeeping, is a big part for us. So these are super easy to use. You just turn them on, it, the little display comes up, you push the button, and you're ready to go. If you want to change the channel, it's got a little up-down button and uh, works pretty good. Um, these have a pretty good range and they're super convenient if your spotter steps out of the, the vehicle and wants to talk to you, they can give you hand signals, you know, left, right, whatever, driver, passenger, however you communicate um, through this and talking to you in the vehicle. Sometimes vehicles are loud or it's bad weather, you got windows up, it's hard to communicate. Having a little handheld you can take out with you is pretty convenient. These are also great if your friend that comes along with you doesn't have a big, you know, main unit, um, you can communicate with them on one of these. Now, I can tell you, when you do one of these, um, it is a lot more powerful. These are about 5 watt, and these are 60 watt. So, even when you transmit, you don't have to talk any louder. This guy is going to come through a lot louder. And uh, I know you're probably asking yourself, hey, Tony, what's the difference between this and a CB? CBs are, are long to the wayside. Um, these, these actually have much better reception and able to project out for miles. Sometimes when we're out at the hammers, we can talk you know, 10 or so miles away. So you, you get a really long range on these and uh, very little noise, you know, side noise like you would on a CB. So um, again, would come to you all pre-programmed from rugged and uh, super handy. Now, what a lot of us have done, like I have in the Terramoto, is I couple this with a intercom system. 
and then everybody in the, in the vehicle wears one of these headsets. So um, this is super nice because everybody gets their own volume control. So even though you're plugged into the intercom, which has its own master, De looks like Debbie's got a question. We'll, we'll take that real quick. Yeah, Jim Farmer uh, watching today asked if they're pre-programmed. How do you know what frequency to run? So um, what they do is they pre-program them with all the main and most popular frequencies, right? So then when you go on a trail ride, you come up to somebody like me and I would say, oh, we're going to be on uh, BITD or uh, Weatherman or some of these other ones that you've heard. Um, Genrite has their own channels. So a lot of the time we'll run on a Genrite channel. Um, we don't always broadcast what our channel is because sometimes we want privacy. So um, in that case, if it's a, a big group, what I'd rather do is just use one of the public uh, main channels and then we would do that and let everybody talk on the same frequency. So yeah, great question. What else um, Corey Lone Wolf Picard has a question regarding the Terramoto. Sure. You want to answer that? Sure, now I can answer that. Yes, yeah, sitting right here. Okay. Um, he says, what is the measurement on the Terramoto for the top of the axle to the frame and the frame to the ground. Put a 2005 Ford F-250 Super Duty front Dana 60 under my 2013 JKU and have a top of axle to frame of about four inches with a low pro Artec truss. He's three linked front and rear, stretched the front to make it 118 inch wheelbase and just trying to get his ride height from frame to ground in the right area and still have the suspension travel and frame to axle clearance. Okay, so that, um, Alex, you can spin around here. Um, as everybody can see, the Terramoto is in the lift right now. So um, yeah, I can't give him that measurement that he's looking for because it's up in the air. And uh, I think what he's looking for is ride height uh, information. And um, while we've got, we're looking over here, um, I wanted to, you know, because I'm getting ready to change the knuckles to that ball joint eliminator. I also just put an A-pillar cage because I've got the, the uh, race version of the cage where the A-pillars come all the way down and they connect right here. And then this ties through your thing bushing into the front of the frame. So now um, the front and the rear of this cage are tied to the chassis. So um, that's going to help extend the life. Um, it does limit the amount of uh, flex. You know, the, these Jeeps, um, JK, and now even more so the JL, came with really soft body mounts. Obviously, you know, it's, uh, they, they want to make the ride comfortable and quiet. So um, this does limit some of that. So you want to keep that in mind. But for that gentleman, when I get this back on the ground, I'll take some of those measurements and uh, post those. Uh, after this, I'll, I'll answer the question. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Mart Mart Fart would like to know how to go about getting your own channel, such as licensing and legalities. Um, he'd have to talk to one of the folks over at Rugged Radios. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. We coordinated through them, so um, and and ours is um, we've we've had some special stuff done on our channel. Uh, because we use it for racing and we don't want anybody else to be able to talk over us. So um, something that's important for you to understand is that when anybody cues the mic, the, the, the two people, the, the driver and co-driver, cannot talk. So um, we have to go to a privacy channel where um, nobody can talk over us. And we don't let any of our team even be on that channel because anybody that accidentally presses the mic uh, and cues up the radio, we can't talk at all. And when you're going 100 miles an hour, you got to have information like right now. And uh, it's very dangerous for, for me and the co-driver not to be able to talk. More questions? Uh, I think that's it for now. Okay. Um, let's, let's go, unless we have about the, the ball joint limiter, I guess we can do that over here right now. So um, wire welding in these two cups and um, that required that we heated these up to um, over 600 degrees and had to use some special nickel rod to um, TIG weld these in here. 
And uh, now that they're in, then you can put the unit bearings back in and you can see the big heavy duty bolts. It requires one more step here, and that is that uh, I need to fit this in the Jeep. You can see that this is eccentric. So it gives you the ability, let's, let's actually put this in the orientation it would be. It gives you the ability to lean the camber. We always talk about caster, which is this way, the camber. And um, you can basically get your front end, if it's messed up, kind of aligned. And then you slice this, and it locks in. I'll show you right here. That spacer, uh, actually, let's go to the other side. It's even better. It locks it in right here. So that, that spacer you just saw was completely round, so we'll slice off one side and then it locks in with this little tab right here. So um, yeah, it's, and you know, of course, I still have to put my high steer arms back on, move my brakes, you know, do a bunch of stuff, but um, it's, we're, we're gonna give it a try. I'm gonna put them on tonight and uh, we'll be out at the hammers tomorrow running it. So I will have a report for you pretty, pretty darn quick. Hey, John, um, another yep. um, radio sure. question. Yeah, that's, that's and, the show. Andy Orlando, does Rugged offer second channel monitoring? Say if there are numerous groups out, each on their own channel. Um, sorry, it flipped. Uh, la, la, la. They do. Each I, on their own channel. Do trail leaders have the ability to be on one channel for their group monitoring a de dedicated recovery or emergency channel for everyone out? So, um, if you can see that pretty good. Okay, so this one, see the little dashed line down there? You can actually do the second channel. Can you see it pretty good? Um, right now it's on fair, and then the dashed line, you can add a second channel. So when the arrow is on the upper one or the lower one, that's, what, that's the channel you can talk on, and the other one you can only listen on. Um, so. The other thing Rugged can do for you is they can add channels that only you can monitor. You, you couldn't talk unless, you know, if you, even if you tried. Even if you sat on the button, you can't talk. You can only monitor. So there, there are some options um, on that. And the big radio has the same thing, you know. Um, I think one or both of these also, I haven't used it lately, so um, I apologize, but has the ability to just scan and when somebody talks it'll grab that channel and you can see um, what they're talking on so like if you lost your buddies and you're trying to find them you know it'll scan through and uh, help you to find that so anyways what I was talking about before was if you couple the main unit with the intercom um, that also gives you the ability to tie in your music if you want to so now you're listening to everything through the headset and by the way, you know, this cancels out all the other noise. And when you talk, you know, you're, it, you'd swear you're in a, a sound room talking to your four people in your vehicle because it's really nice. And then, like I said, you got your own volume control. So um, if, if you're a very quiet person, you could, uh, you know, listen in your own level. Now, they do also make an adapter for this kind of thing that goes to this radio as well. So you take out the antenna or something on this thing. I don't know what it was, but yeah, you can adapt one of these to that. So that's, that's pretty nice too. Uh, more questions on the radio? Uh, no. We, we use the heck out of them. I'm telling you, it's, uh, it has become, we've replaced every CB and everything we own and um, it is the standard now. So um, when you go out, now there are um, still some radios that you can program in the actual frequency and then you'll have that um, where you can talk, you know, to the other channels. So uh, more of a ham style um, on that. All right. So hopefully that uh, uncovers some of the mystery. The other uh, benefit to this kind of a thing, the base unit, is then you can put a good antenna on the roof or you know an external antenna that's got a better ground plane and uh, you can see right here that ours has custom programming um, so we've asked for certain things one of the things that we ask for by the way is that even when we're wearing the headsets it still broadcasts through the speaker on the radio 
so that um, if for some reason we were to take off the headset, you would still hear somebody talking and then you could put it back on to broadcast. When you do get the headset, that does require a separate push to talk button. So when you're on the intercom, you can talk to everybody in your vehicle without even pushing a button. It can be voice activated or it can just be on and you can talk, just like we're talking right now. But if you want to talk to the outside world, that requires pushing a button. And when you push that button, then you're broadcasting, just as if you hit the button on this and we're saying, hey, you know, where is everybody? I'm stuck back here. Okay. Uh, Kelly wanted to know if there was a Bluetooth headset. Uh, there is, not that I'm aware of, uh, there is the intercom links through Bluetooth. So, the, so like when you want to play your music off your phone, um, your phone will just tie in and then you just push play and it plays right through your headsets. It's pretty nice. You can also do your cell phone that way as well. And uh, I think actually that's the unit that Kelly has in his is the, the one that connects with his phone through Bluetooth. I don't, wow. I, mine's still a cord. Wow. So. I'm kind Rand of, Randy I'm kind Kelly of um, would like to know what kind of antenna are you using for the base unit and where did you mount it? So um, back over to the ceremony, it's a little bit hard to see, but um, you can see it a little bit. It's up on the roof. So that's actually the ideal spot is um, in the, the ground plane. You've got a great on the roof. Now my roof's metal, right? So that creates an awesome ground plane. And uh, otherwise, like on Kelly's Jeep or Jamie's Jeep, it's mounted on the back of the cage, kind of like you would a, a CB antenna. Um, they're not very big. They tend to actually be a little bit smaller. Um, so, and they work great. And like I say, they go for miles. We, depending on how, much, how many other people are out there, I was going to say how much traffic there is, but how many other people are out there, um, you know, you can, you, sometimes we can reach, you know, like 15, 20 miles. So. Good, good stuff, definitely good. And for us, what we're doing a lot of the time when we're out there pre-running or racing, it's dangerous. So we need to be in contact uh, to make sure that they're able to hear where we are. So if something does happen, they know where to come find us. So, yep. Now we, we also, on race day, we have a tracker on the car um, so that uh, the race organization knows where to find us if, if we go radio silent. <laughs> a lot of people probably don't even realize that. Yep. What else you got? That's it. That, really? Wow. Pretty quiet. All right. Who's ready to go take a tour of the shop? Let's go check it out and uh, see what we got. All right. Deb's going to grab Rocket here, and we're going to go check it out. The guys are still over there busy. I, by the way, I am just doing a quick prep on the Terramoto, just making sure everything looks good. And, uh, you know, fluids, bolts, everything, and then wrap it up and put it on the trailer. So you can see trailers are staged right outside, ready to rip. We got more trailers in here that we're packing. Uh, Tone? Yep. Question? Yep. Um, so those JLJT half doors, any chance of a rough idea on lead times if ordered now? A rough idea on what? Lead time. Lead on time. On the JLJT half doors. Uh, I was hoping to already have those done, I'll be honest. Um, we, we've gotten into, you know, lots of other things. This is a, a very, uh, to, to say very busy time of year is, is uh, it doesn't even emphasize enough how busy it is. So, um, you know, I'm going to say, gosh, we've, uh, we just have to do our final sign off on some of the tooling that, that we hold them together and weld them at the same time. And uh, I'm going to say that's a couple weeks after we get back, so probably four weeks from now would be my best guess. Okay. Uh, Corey Lonewell Picard asked if you can talk to people if they don't have rugged radios, um, so such as if they're using a CB or something else. No. Uh, the, the, when it comes to race radios, rugged and PCI are the two main companies, and you can talk to somebody from a rugged to a PCI back and forth. Um, but, and, and I know there's a couple of, you know, the little Bofong, you know, handheld units like I was showing you, um, that you can buy on eBay or whatever, I don't know, um, and punch in the number manually. So there's a few things out there, but, um, 
Yeah, I, if I were you, I'd just get a rugged one that's already pre-done, just buy their setup, it's good stuff. It's, it's, it is rugged, it'll take the beating, and it's weatherproof, and you know, all the good stuff. And then if you have any trouble, they can give you good customer service to uh, you know, troubleshoot it. All right, um, I did notice uh, that these showed up, and uh, if you've never seen some of these up close, I want to show you what uh, what a work of art these things are. These are the the really nice 300 m the finishes, unbelievable on these things. These are um, some 35 spline, you know, axles. And then um, if you're not familiar with these, then uh, this is what goes on one of the ends. You just unwrap this. This is all preloaded with grease. You shove the one end in, and uh, then you've got your complete axle. And if you've never seen this before, this is kind of cool too. You use the needle to grease these, and uh, that works out really good too, so you don't have to take the whole thing apart. And uh, they come with some special RCV grease, which is pretty nice. So um, RCV has really gotten us set up and taken care of, which is great. We appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to getting those in. Um, Jordan's car uh, was dyno tuned yesterday, so it's already been together. They've got it back apart. Um, they're just looking at some stuff to make sure. It made an extra 75 horsepower yesterday, which is awesome, especially when everything is new and tight. Um, usually it takes a little time for everything to loosen up, and then the thing will really start making power. So it'll, it'll probably do even better. So um, yeah, this is a very, if you look at how packed in everything is, it is a tight, tight, tight package. And uh, he just put on some brand new uh, Vision X headlights. And of course, he's got the Unite bar on up above that, which is really cool. If you haven't seen that, it's a piece of extrusion and you just stack on uh, whatever color, whatever uh, range, you know, angle of lights you want on there. Very compact. It's really a, a nice package. So uh, something to check out for sure. Uh, Tony, question, he, uh, Heath Ironside, roughly how much is a Nexus ch chassis welded out? Oh, man. Uh, 50,000. Easy. Easy. <laughs> uh, just, the, just the trailing arms are almost $10,000. So, yeah, it's, it's quite expensive. <laughs> Racing is not cheap at all. So um, Jordan just, they just welded all brand new arms for this. Um, of course, he's running the R1 brakes. He's got the, these, a lot of people haven't even seen these. These are, this is a three inch IVP, just like I run over on Terramoto. This one, see these two tubes here? Every time the shock cycles, it pumps the oil through and cools them through these coolers. So mine has a reservoir like this with the DSC adjuster, but Jordan's had, this is all like super high tech, only get it when you're racing, you know, good, good, cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, Terry Mode asked if Tony can share how they communicate around the mountains at KOH during the race. Sure. Yeah, that's actually done. Um, so during the race, you know, you got a hundred teams out there on race day, all trying to communicate with their team. And, um, that's that's a, a much more complicated you know you're, you're talking about now you're getting crossover and you know you get close to somebody that kind of thing so what we do is we put a guy super high as a relay with one of those base radios like i was showing you the the same one you could buy and then he's got like uh a, a, you know since he's up high a great shot that he can you know the signal can easily travel you know 10 20 miles so um, yeah, great question, and we don't talk about that very often, having that relay. It's, it's, it works really good. Uh, Val asks, how many horsepower does Unicorn have? Uh, Unicorn has just over 800, so yeah, it's got plenty of power. Plenty of power. And when you put that to the ground with four-wheel drive, things like a rocket ship, so yeah, good stuff. All custom. Every, everything on this is custom. You know, headers, even, even all this stuff is all prototype you know, only for racers, um, you know, all that Fox stuff that I was telling you about. Um, we've, we've worked for 
days out there in the desert tuning, you know, the fronts and the rears. This is all special stuff. And uh, yeah, we've got the, the worn 9.0 on the front. That's a brand new one. They just sent us, did you guys load that up with the rope yet? The who? No, uh, no not yet. That's somebody's job over here. I saw it on the list. Um, yeah, and of course, he's got the RCVs. Um, you can see them there. And uh, yeah, good stuff. What are the questions you got? Uh, okay? Since Jordan is there, can he talk about his factory Honda Talon UTV? He actually can. There's one here. There's one here. Yeah, let's what? go let's walk over and check it out. He's got his Honda hat on. I told you there's all kinds of cool stuff going on over here. Hey, Tone. Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so the, uh, Harry, you got to stand guys. close to me. Oh, you have the mic? I got the mic. This, that's so the okay. Honda guys just dropped off um, our pre-runner uh, a couple hours ago, actually. That I think they dropped off at like 3 o'clock. Um, so this one's this one's almost identical to the ones we'll be racing, um, which is super nice. Uh, the shocks are a little better and bigger on the uh, on the race one. So is this a pre-runner? This is the pre-runner. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, we this one has what 96 miles on it. It's like <laughs> it's like brand new. I'm like, oh man, okay. Yeah. But, Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, all, same suspension combo that is on the the race one. Uh, Drivetrain's all the same. You know, uh, this one just doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the race one has, of course. But uh, we should be able to, you know, do all the same stuff in this one. Uh, make all our notes in this. Uh, yeah, it's it's like I said, almost exact. You know, it's even got all the skid plates and everything, so we can take it in the rocks and pre-run there too. Does, do they put a radio in this one? I didn't look. Uh, Might have to send you with a handheld. Yeah. <laughs> this one is paddle shift. It doesn't have a uh, intercom. In it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's. So yeah. we got to outfit it with some stuff. It's, yeah, it's it's got almost everything. Cool. Um, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, I've had a blast driving these. Nick will be co-driving with me in the UTV race. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be a exciting adventure. For yeah, us yeah, very cool. But, uh, and these have no belt. Yeah, no That's belt. That's the big difference. No belt. Right? Yeah, it's got a six-speed paddle shift transmission in it. That's cool. Uh, and a low range. Yep, low yep. range. Uh, this is not. This is the naturally aspirated model. It doesn't have a turbo, no turbo. or anything on yeah. it. But cool. You know, I I think I think it'll be fine. I think we're gonna. Have a blast and you know, just keep moving in the rod. I mean, you know how it is. Just keep right. moving in the rod. Yep. Very cool. But, uh, yeah. Very cool. Um, anything else you want to mention about uh, the 4400 car? Just. It's almost done. Almost done. <laughs> I know you guys are down to like putting the winch line yeah. on. It's about, about it. Yeah. I, just, I mean, the last big thing I got to finish is skid plates. Um, just trying to get them all drilled and fit. But otherwise, we're we're right about there. Cool, and um, it did good yesterday. Yep, did good yesterday on the dyno. Um, sounds awesome. Sounds good as always. Yeah. Yep. I'm, I'm, and our changes made more horsepower, so I we're know. stoked about that. I know. So. I wasn't expecting nearly that much. <laughs> but uh, so. yeah, yeah, all all good over here. So cool. All, all right. right. Well, thanks for taking a second yep. and chatting yep. with yep. us. Yep. Yep. Um, we happen to be standing right next to the Growler. Um, they just put on our accessory bracket kit, which holds the alternator and the power steering. They're um, just kind of fitting up some of these things and uh, making sure that they've got it before they put the fenders and the grill and everything back on. I saw the grill around here somewhere. It's all put together and ready to rip. So this is coming along really nicely. And uh, I know that um, Jamie's really looking forward to getting this done. It will also not be making it out to the hammers we were hoping. They would be a little further along, but not quite. So, yep, really cool. What Jason Handley um, asked, will you run aluminum skid plates on the 4400? Yes, they are aluminum. And Jordan does do uh, that UHMW stuff, um, which is kind of a mixed blessing. You know, that, that stuff, um, although it can be slippery, you know, it can also grab and kind of gall and 
just like a cutting board, you know, you can imagine. So, um, uh, Sean uh, Pasquez. Yep. What what brand of insulation on the firewall do you? Use? That's all DEI. We've actually got some over there um, that we can show you. Um, it's what it's the, that's what we use on Jamie's. You know, so whether it's Jamie's or Kelly's or Patrick's or the old race car or the new race car or the Terramoto, it's all the DEI. So this stuff, um, Alex, I don't know if you can get. There's there's some white like silicate built into it. So there's a sticky back, then it's got the white stuff, and then the aluminum. So the aluminum reflects as much as it can, and then the silicate just deadens. It's, it's like a, a ceramic. And I'm not saying silicone, it's silicate. And uh, that, that's, it's, uh, it really deadens the heat from being able to transfer through. Um, and it's very, very uh, high temperature. So um, good stuff. And you can see, you know, we use... Um, the extra stuff like everywhere not not as much on I, I have it in more spots on the Terramoto but like on Jordan's race car we can walk back over there we've got it everywhere hey Tom so, yep Ben Bauer asked what's the rooter size on the 4400 the what rooter size r-o-o-t-e-r -E you know what that would be I don't know okay yeah, might see, be a typo yeah see if we can get some more okay so we got Kelly's here we're doing some mods on that this is Patrick's. We showed you this the other day, um, and uh, you know this is the one with the factory six-cylinder uh, automatic transmission and factory transfer case. So this is really coming along. The cage is in it now, and uh, again, this this you know is going to have all the factory dash, center console, everything. So this is much more, but this is tracer, right? So it's stretched. You can see how clean that looks. You know, you get the black rockers and you know, a set of tires and wheels, and uh, you, you don't even, you've got to look twice to even see what happened, you know. So it's, it's really cool and clean, and uh, everything mounts up really nice. Here's one of our tailgate projectors. Um, you don't get to see this very often on here, and then our little filler piece on the bottom. So that's kind of nice. He's, he is set up for a tire carrier. So that works out good. And he's got a receiver style rear bumper with a step built into it, which a lot of guys like. So. Uh, brake rotor. Oh, brake, brake rotor. rotor size. Uh, so we run, that's a 14 inch rotor. It's, it's the biggest thing we can get inside a 17 inch wheel by the time you get the brake on there. So 14s front and rear. Um, and uh, those R1 uh, also have a, uh, that's a special rotor, and then it goes through an aluminum hat, which attaches to the hub. So the aluminum helps to dissipate off some of the heat and not let that heat get into the wheel bearing. So um, very important. Yep. Uh, Rick Rudell asked, what's the, the gear ratio? Uh, so in, it, it's all, um, <laughs> you guys, I don't know if you've watched many of these shows, but I always talk about this. Um, we run a three to one transfer case, and we let the torque converter do some of the work. Um, but you got to remember, whether it's a Terramoto or one of the race cars, we're, we're not going slow like the traditional guy. We're moving. And um, if you aren't sure what that looks like, go watch one of the newest videos we posted over on the Genrite uh, YouTube channel where uh, Tommy Dykstra, who's also racing uh, this next week, um, and the Terramoto are going through some of the rock trails and some of the desert. And uh, you can get a, a real good in-car idea how fast we're actually going. So um, trails that normally take, uh, you know, a Jeep group six, seven hours to get through. Uh, we're probably doing them in 20 or 30 minutes. So where a 4400 car would be doing them in, you know, eight or nine minutes. So a lot faster. So you go from hours to minutes in one of these cars. So big difference. Yep. Uh, radio question. Sure. DB Tom, why is the only waterproof radio from Rugged the 15 watt? Why not have the waterproof available in the higher end unit? Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure. It might just be what's available. And uh, we've had a number of those waterproof units. Uh, sit, some of those were the very first radios we bought when I first started racing. And we're still using some of those. Those things have been great. And we have beat the daylights out of them and uh, charged them over and over and over again. So I can't, again, I can't say enough about that stuff. Um, here's the antenna mount on Kelly's, by the way. 
Um, somebody was asking, look at how small this antenna is. It's on a spring, and uh, it's got this cool little mount that Rugged sells as well that just clamps onto the cage, and it's just tucked in nice and tight. So um, pretty, pretty darn cool. So. Uh, Andy Orlando, probably a silly question, but any shop that you have Fox 2.5 or 3.0 coilovers with DSC in stock, maybe 14s and 16s? You'd, you'd have to call. Um, we almost always have them in stock, but uh, the manufacturers, I, yeah, I don't care whether it's wheels, tires, shocks, transfer cases, everybody is running behind except for us. Like we're, we're cranking out product right now, uh, Genrite products. So but all of those other things we sell, we call those third party products. Um, those are the products that I run myself, that, that I endorse, that we offer as a result of that to you guys, the public. And uh, we buy that stuff in bulk. We buy it as fast as we, they can make it. And uh, we give those companies blanket POs. That's, that's how much of that product we buy. And they're just struggling to keep up with that. So a lot of it's due to COVID. And even if, even if they have the ability to put it together, they're waiting on their suppliers you know, for internal parts as well. So it's been kind of a cluster, to say the least. So. Uh, George Gonzalez, I have a Jeep TJ with G2 Dana 44 axles, are RVC shafts an upgrade? Yes, they are. Um, just be mindful, the, the RCV shafts are really, really nice. And by the way, they guarantee those not to break. And you know why? Because they know the next thing you're gonna break is your ring and pinion <laughs> before those axles go. So um, just be mindful, you know, you upgrade these parts, you're, you're just moving it somewhere else. So um, that's why I'm a big advocate of spend the money once, get it all done, you never think about it again, it's all evenly matched. That's part of what we sell as a system. So um, I know it's more money, I know it's expensive, but if you're that guy that can afford it and you want to be done, we have that solution. So just keep that in mind. Uh, John Miller asked, what is the best way to follow Jen Wright at the race? Um, that's going to be a combination of things. Um, I know this year um, Ultra 4 is offering an upgraded uh, way to watch the live. And um, it costs a few bucks, but I think the coverage will be better. Um, the other thing that I was going to do was um, I was going to tweet because um, it's pretty easy to get a tweet out um, where when I hear the race car call in, I'm going to tweet what race mile he's at. Um, there is also, I believe they can get on the, the yellow brick website YB and follow races. the cars. But what is it? YB races. YB races. And uh, you can see all the different cars. Like you can actually, they give you a little box and you can say, hey, I just want to follow number 98. And um, you can follow just the cars you want. Because otherwise, there's a zillion dots on the screen and you're like, oh man, where's Jordan? So um, you can narrow that down and just follow the car you want. Um, by the way, if you're interested in that, try it on Thursday when Jordan races the UTV so that you can kind of get it dialed in for Saturday's race when he's racing his 4400. Um, the 4400s go a lot faster, everything moves faster, and um, it'll, you, you, by then you'll kind of have it dialed in on how to use it all. So try it, my tip is try it on Thursday. And, uh, and if, you buy, if you buy the online TV coverage, it yeah. includes the entire week. Oh, so that's so good too. You don't have to buy it So twice. then you can actually watch all the qualifying, you can watch yeah. the UTV, the stock Moto, mod, motos, everything. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to yep. do it. Yep. So let's, um, let's keep moving around the shop, okay? Um, the guys are working on uh, my old car, and um, this just got... Uh, a uh, brand new engine, uh, transmission, transfer case. The axles uh, have got new gears, new lockers. Everything's fresh in this. Um, this is, right now it's sitting uh, on the lift, so it's all stretched out. Um, this has 16-inch uh, travel shocks all the way around, but that actually gives you more than 16 inches of wheel travel, um, especially in the rear. I think it's got uh, 28 or 30 inches of travel because they're trailing arms. So this, this car um, is very fast. Um, if you, I know there's probably some people that are watching that have had a ride in this thing. 
Um, I still believe this car could win KOH. It's, it's very fast. And when Jordan and I go out and run together, um, there's sections where um, this car is still um, as fast or faster than even his fancy car with the independent suspension because of the way this works and how you can just pound through stuff. So I'm um, pretty cool. Daniel Reese Case would like to know why you run Mickey Thompson Baja Boss. So um, the Baja Boss, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one is, um, you know, obviously we work with Mickey Thompson as a company, right? I like the fact that it's American made. I like these, they, they developed this sidewall. And, um, you know, this is a tire that's been run already, um, you know, for, I don't even know how many hundreds of miles. You can see the condition of the tire is good. The sidewall doesn't even have a scratch on it. I mean, it's, it's perfect. So um, it's a very durable tire. They, they, you know, tire technology these days is really good. And um, this style tread, you know, this was, um, Goodyear did something very similar to this years back where they had these rows and it kind of gives you the best on-road, off-road, um, rock traction, mud traction. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to give you that all-around tire, which is great. Um, I like the sidewall cleats. And then this particular tire that we run on these cars is a sticky. So if you've never seen one of these, like, it's, guys, it is super, super gummy. Like, any of these treads are just, like, unbelievable. Um, and Mickey Thompson's done a really good job coming up with that compound and the fact that it doesn't chunk. So a lot of uh, manufacturers can make a tire that's soft, but then, you know, you get on the rocks and it just grabs and tears off the whole lug. That's what you don't want. You don't want them to chunk. What do you got? Sam Walker um, hey, asked, Sam. didn't he hear that um, they were using a different tracking system this year? Uh, I don't think so. The, the yellow brick still should be. Now, I know that we're putting on our own tracker <laughs> on Jordan's car. We, we bought our own, so we will be tracking him independently uh, that, with a system that updates every two minutes instead of 10 minutes. So we're going to know exactly where he is. Beside the fact that, um, you may not know this, on race day, I get in the Terramoto and I know my way around uh, Johnson Valley so well that I can beat the race car to the different sections and watch Jordan come through. So I have the ability to watch how the shocks are working, how the, are the tires still full of air, are the wheels still round? You know, there, there's, this race is incredibly brutal, what, what they're gonna run these guys over on race day. By the way, the, you gotta remember the 4400 race is also the last race of the entire week. So the race course has gotten used by hundreds of probably almost a thousand cars by the time these cars run and it is just beat whooped out rocks are sticking up everything you could imagine and um, it is incredibly brutal so um, i can tell you let's let's walk over here um this um here even though it looks exactly like that tire i was just showing you this is a brand new tire that is specially constructed for us to race at KOH. So um, this is kind of a secret weapon right now and um, we'll, we'll actually be getting to try these for the first time um, tomorrow when we get out to, to the hammers. So um, I know Jordan's really looking forward to this and uh, we believe this is going to be the tire for sure. So, um, yeah, if you've never seen this car up close, the radiator's buried way down there. Those are the transmission coolers. And then there's an oil cooler um, tucked up there. Even, even this is special. It's got a little thing up top, you can't see it right now, that you hook a drill to and you pre-prime the oil system. Um, this is the fuel cell. And this inside here sits um, two A1000 fuel pumps on either side of the tank. And this car has the ability that if, if the fuel level, because you're on an angle or anything should happen where it sees a three pound drop in fuel pressure, it fires the other pump. It's absolutely seamless to the driver and it'll um, give them a report. So when they get to the pit, 
somebody can check and make sure something didn't come loose or maybe a fuel filter's clogged. And uh, so we're, we're constantly relaying all that information to the, the pit crew. And by the way, um, in each pit stop, there's 10 people to service the car. It, it looks like an F1 stop. You know, people are coming in, changing tires. They're looking at all the critical components. They're helping the driver and co-driver. They're fueling. And uh, yeah, lots, lots going on. Dwayne White asks, what size fuel cell and how many refills during the race? So this is a 40 gallon cell. Um, this car gets about three miles to the gallon. It's, it's, it's uh, making all that horsepower it takes a lot of fuel and that's race gas. That's not the cheap stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, we're, we're fueling, um, you know, he'll, he'll make a 60 mile loop and then for, uh, for fuel. So, and they can put uh, 22 gallons in in 30 seconds. So it's a, it's a very fast and that they're hopefully they can get all that other work done while the fuel and then they're out. So Kelly yep. Sims asked if there are block heaters. There are. Um, in fact, we, we have a whole series of things that we do to help this car get warm in the morning. So um, one of it is that it stays in a trailer that's heated to 75 degrees all night long the night before the race so that the moment it pulls out, it's, it's ready to rip, so, yep. Uh, did you talk about the differentials? Um, we didn't. Um, these are, they're very small and compact. You can see them right here. They're aluminum, so they're lightweight. And uh, yeah, the, Dave they're- Dave Sunday wants to know if you preheat those. The, the differentials? The race. So, um, the <laughs> on, on a race car, there's all kinds of real trick stuff. So the, the differentials, the transfer case, all of these things um, are heated through the engine water. So um, there's little transfer tanks that the oil flows through and gets heated up with the engine cooling system, or in this case, the warming system. So um, yeah, yeah, very, very trick. These, these have electric pumps on them. So as soon as the car turns on, it's pumping that oil through and pulling the heat off the water to heat up the oil. So um, really, really cool stuff. Yeah, great question. We don't normally talk about that stuff, but yeah, there's some, this, this car is super high tech. There's, there's sensors and monitors all over the place checking temperatures in and out and pressures in and out. And um, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on for sure. So, yep. Eddie Oliver, what is the material thickness aluminum used for the body panels? Thin. We run super thin. I think it's, uh, um, gosh, there's even a body panel around here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's super thin. We, we want it as thin as possible, and if it gets grabbed, we want it to come off and be gone. So, yep. Nathan Ecker wants to know what, how much does one of those differentials cost? Uh, fronts more than rear, um, you're probably in the 30,000 range. They're very expensive. And they, everything on this car has to be serviced 100% every time we take it out. So it is more than a full-time job just keeping up with this thing. This is, this is F1 for off-road. This is the very, very, very cutting edge. For sure. Yep. What else you got? That's it for right now. Wow. All right. Awesome. Uh, I don't know. Where are we at on time? Do you know? Uh, it shows here that we're at 50 minutes, 50 minutes into it. Okay. So we got about 10 minutes. So if you guys have any um, additional questions, get them, get them in here. Um, of course, we are um, on the motorsport side where we're doing all the cool builds. And uh, like I said, they're, they're working on my old car right now. And um, I've got the Terramoto in the studio where I'm using the lift over there to um, get it prepped. Um, so you got to see Jordan's uh, pre-runner side-by-side, -side, which is pretty cool. And uh, you can see a number of these bins around here. This is what we use to put all of the spare parts in or uh, tools that we need to work on the race car 
go in here to be transported out to um, the race. So. A couple of viewers have asked if uh, the jail frame is available to see. It is not. Uh, Darren, when's that jail frame going to be over here? There's the man right there. Let's, let's see what he has to say for himself. Done. <laughs> so maybe not next Monday, but the Monday after that? <laughs> He's laughing. Um, so I, I would say after we come back from KOH, we can probably see it. Um, on one of the tech talks, whether it's the Tuesday or Thursday after KOH, but we could probably get it in there. So I know that he's ready to get it over here and start ripping in this baby. So more than more than we already are. So um, what else we got? Uh, Daniel Reese's case is KMC wheels the better beadlock manufacturer. So um, KMC, we've, we've got this one out right here. Um, it's an easy one for me to talk about. This is, um, you know, we, we run a forged wheel from them. And uh, I showed this the other day on my Facebook. And this is one of the, the cool features. You know, they double drill this. So when you look at the ring, you know, the, the holes are here, right? So what they do is they put a second pattern in. So if you booger up one of the, the bolts or the threads, you just take the ring and you rotate it one and you put the ring back on. And um, these, these wheels here are a, a forge wheel. It's a special race wheel. And uh, these are extra tough. And it's the, you know, what we run. But I can tell you this, you know, you can see the same wheel over there on Kelly's uh, tracer, LJ. Um, he, he spent the extra bucks and got the really nice wheel. The forge wheels, if you bend them, um, you can get them straightened, so that's pretty nice. A cast wheel, a lot of the time, will crack or break, so um, going with the forge wheel is pretty nice. And of course, Kelly's running the 42s, so we're still waiting for those Mickey Thompson Baja Boss 42s to come out. So, and then uh, we do all of our own uh, tire mounting and dismounting here. Um, so the the team comes in; they're extra careful. We make sure that everything gets seated. All the bolts are lubed and properly torqued so a very important process and then we use those arp bolts i don't know if you saw those i did a post on that too 12 point um really nice the, the benefit to that is when they get boogered up um it's easy to get them you know on and off so we actually come over here let's let's look at that real close so you can see the head is much smaller in the opening so normally you'd be able, barely be able to get a socket on, and now, um, and these come in stainless steel, so what you're looking at is stainless steel, and uh, that's super nice. It won't rust. If it gets scratched, you know, you're just touching the outside surface because the bolts sit down inside there, and uh, super easy to uh, retorque and get on and off. So definitely worth the extra money if, if you can afford it. What else you got? We're down to the last few minutes, so if you've got some more questions, fire them in. Um, the next live, I can tell you, um, you know, we'll be out there because we, we move over tomorrow to the hammers for the race. And uh, we'll do the next live. And by the time I come to you at 4 o'clock on Thursday, we will have already pre-run the race course. So we're going to have a bunch of cool uh, things to tell you guys for sure. Uh, Steve Waterman said he's ordering the aluminum tank cover. Do you think he could get away with an aluminum skid plate also or play it safe with a steel skid plate? Um, you know, uh, Shane runs the aluminum uh, skid plate. Um, I've run the aluminum skid plate on the growler for years. And, uh, you know, that's a 60 pound difference. So it's a, it's a big weight savings. And uh, I, would, I would highly suggest the aluminum. Think about it this way. You know, even if you do beat it up, it's a, you can replace it. It's not that tough, uh, to, to, not that difficult to replace. It is very tough, the skid plate itself. And um, there's foam between the tank and the skid plate. So even if you dent it, it's still got a foam barrier there to uh, help protect the tank. So. And keep in mind, the skid plate is twice as thick as what the tank is. And our tanks are uh, eighth inch, eighth inch thick, so plenty thick. What else you got? A couple of viewers have asked where Richard Garrett is. 
He's over there someplace, I think. Oh, he already left? So he's on his way to the hammers. He, uh, he loaded up. Um, we're supposed to get, today is nice, tomorrow is supposed to be terrible. We're supposed to get two inches of rain, and uh, Richard's Jeep is open, as you know, no top. So he was trying to get a jump on uh, getting out there before the rain hits. Yeah, we're supposed to get one to two inches tomorrow, then two to three inches the next day. So I'm trying to do the same thing, get out of Dodge. So I will be finished packing up tonight and uh, ready to rip. So. Uh, uh, Ed Gladden wanted to know, what's the horsepower in Growler? Uh, we're not quite sure. We think it's going to be about 600 based on the, the head mods, the cam, you know, some of that. So it'll be just a little bit less in Terramoto. But it's, a, it's definitely a healthy motor. It's got all the good stuff. You know, it's got upgraded rockers. Uh, it's got uh, upgraded lifters. So it's got the LS7 lifters. It's got, um, yeah, the stage three heads, I think, from West Coast. I mean, it's bigger valves, all ported. Like, it's, it's got all the cool stuff, the fast one or two manifold. So, yeah, it's going to be hot ticket. Sure. Brian Gibson tuned in late. He said, sorry, I've not been around to catch the updates, but is there any new news on the JL Elite kit? Uh, he is late. Um, we'll have that frame here um, on one of my tech talks right after KOH. And that uh, frame is done, and we are ready to get it in our own JL. So thank you for being patient. We are really close. We're really close, so. Uh, Jonathan Bissich, I'm not sure which he's referring to. He asks, what's the cheapest you can build one of them at home? Oh, like a race car? Uh, you know, man. Um, you know, I, I will say this. When, when we go out there, we go out to win. Um, so we're, we're not taking the cheap route. We're not trying to skate by. We're like, we want to go bring it, so. Um, Similar to, you know, um, like a Tracer or an Elite style build, um, you, what you got to do, and we talked about this a little earlier, is you got you to get all the good stuff or somewhere in the chain you've got a weak link. And uh, what we do is we build everything heavy duty enough so that what, what it comes down to is you just spin the tires. And you can spin the tires without the worry of knowing that something's going to snap the moment they hook up. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a completely different animal, and you've got a lot of suspension travel to um, make it so you can go fast. So. Uh, Felix Ambriz, when will the JL fuel cell be available and the JL two-door corner armor? So, JL four-door corner armor showed up somewhere around here today. Um, I know Alfie texted me, and he's like, woo it's here. Um, I haven't seen it. I, I was going to grab it before this broadcast, but... I know it's here. Uh, two door stuff is way back. I'll be honest. Like it's it's not even on my radar. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, everything I'm working on is geared around the four door. The four door is 85% of the market. So um, we gotta we gotta go for the, the the bulk right now. So Eric Brady asks what beadlock rings are on Jordan's wheels. So those are those come from KMC. And uh, it's a beefier. So these um, these beadlock rings take a 3 8 bolt. So a normal um, beadlock would take a 5 16. These are 3 8 It's a much bigger bolt. And uh, yeah, I mean, they, they make it so we can just brutalize these wheels for sure. And you can see, like on Kelly's, he's got the regular bolt. This is what I was talking about, how, you know, when, when the beadlock ring gets messed up, now it's going to be hard to get that socket on there. So, um, you know, the rings are easy to replace. They're relatively inexpensive. But once it starts doing this, now you got to clear that before you can get uh, the socket on there. So where those 12 points, you know, the, it's much smaller in the middle, and you can get a socket right on there. So that's the reason. You know, we're changing tires all the time on the race car so you got to have the ability to get that stuff on and off fast so donnie Tor torre off topic building a 2005 lj on junkyard tons coilovers and 40s do you need sway bars front and rear at all 90 percent trails in moab and sand hollow 10 percent road driving 
Um, you know, a lot of Sand Hollow and Moab in particular are off camber. So most people don't like the way that feels. Um, Kelly's right here. Um, I shock tune this myself. And um, what I did was by setting the secondary nuts and selecting the right spring rates, I was able to remove, um, we, we only do a rear sway bar, but I was able to remove the rear sway bar by getting all the setup just right. And um, this allows the vehicle to just step through really nicely and, um, you know, handle awesome. So depends on, you know, a lot on the geometry. Um, I'm a lot more experienced uh, or very experienced with shock tuning and getting this stuff set up right and picking the right spring rates. So um, I've got a bit of an advantage there. And that's, that's why um, we offer a lot of customer support um, when people are running our setup because uh, they're able to take a page out of my playbook and, and we share that with our customers. So, yep. VB Tom, is it worth the time, money, and effort to do coilovers for 37s on a YJ or TJ? Sure. I mean, you know, everybody's at a different level. Not everybody wants to run 42s. Um, you know, 37s are fine. Andrew just came off of 37s on his tracer build, and um, he ran that for a long time and was able to go a lot of places. So nothing wrong with 37s for sure. Yep. And, you know, keep in mind the, the coilovers, what they do is they offer you a much better, a much higher quality spring and shock combination. So you get a true dual rate um, is this one a little easier to see or, or even let's go over here. So you get a true dual rate spring, right? So we're running, what is this? This is a 200 on the bottom and a 150 on top. So um, then when this secondary collar kicks in, it's all 200. So it really changes the stability and the predictability of the vehicle when you do it this way. Um, then whatever's on there, you know, uh, from the factory. So, yeah, really nice. And then, of course, these have adjustable compression and whatnot. So, you know, if you go this route, it's going to be a much higher quality ride, much more predictable, much more stable. And uh, that's why we sell them that way. Yep. So we're probably at the one hour mark. Uh, yeah. Do we have any more last minute questions? Uh, it's awesome that people are asking so many questions, but it's time for us to get back to work. We yeah. have a lot to do. So, yep. um, all right, everybody, thank you. Next broadcast will be from King of the Hammers on the lake bed, and we will have already pre-run the race course, so we're gonna have a lot of information for you. You'll get to see um, Jordan's car in the garage, fully set up. Um, it's gonna be awesome, so we will uh, be coming to you from there. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you then.